This is reading expressions. I've borrowed this concept from myself. Uh, I know other people are probably doing some variation of this, but I think it's really important that we learn how to read expressions and really break down what's going on in an expression and what that expression is asking us to do. Today, we're going to answer these two questions and look at several examples. So the big idea is that we want to, when we're looking at a math expression, we want to, realize, we want to recognize what operations are we performing and what order are we performing those operations? This, has to, this is subject to our generic rules where the repeated operation goes before the singular operation. So exponents go before multiplication unless parentheses, I spelled parentheses wrong, this. Hopefully that'll fix it. And similarly, multiplication goes before addition unless there are some parentheses that tell us otherwise. What we're trying to do here is fix PEMDAS. We're trying to fix what PEMDAS is broken because I said it before, PEMDAS is trash. We wanna to learn to read expressions because it's gonna help us solve equations involving that expression where we perform inverse operations in reverse order. And we're all, it's also gonna help us speak the expression properly. We wanna learn how to read what the expression is telling us to do so that we can state in words what the expression is telling us to do in a way that our audience cannot mistake what we've asked them to do. And this is where we were playing the game on Friday when I said, speak this expression to me. And every time you try to tell it to me without spelling it, I would write the wrong thing. And then when you looked at your sentence and what I wrote, you'd see what I wrote was a perfectly reasonable act, um, uh, interpretation of what you said or typed. So, Let's take, uh, what, we, what I like to do here is take a certain set of operations, a multiplication, addition, and, and an exponent. I like to take, all, take those three and just write expressions with those same three operations in different orders so that we can really understand how the parentheses work. The other thing that we want to get rid of is thinking of the distributive property every time we see parentheses because the distributive property is only for, very, for two very specific things right now. The distributive property only tells us that multiplication distributes over addition and exponents distribute over multiplication. But right now, because of the way we're taught PEMDAS, which is trash, uh, we, always, we just, just randomly start to distribute things. But because we're not thinking about the operations involved, we're just seeing the form of parentheses and combining that improperly with the distributive property. So that's the other thing learning to read its expressions is gonna help us with, improper applications of the distributive property. So the other thing, learning to read expressions will also help us avoid, avoid improper application of the distributive property. Usually when we improperly avoid, uh, or sorry, when we improperly apply distribution, the distributive property, we're just looking at the form of things and not what's actually being asked for of us to do. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna pick, take three operations and we're gonna write expressions with those operations in different order. So let's take three expressions or operations. Let's start with three operations and write expressions with those operations in different order.
And I'm gonna use the same three operations. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna have an exponent, a multiplication and an addition, which is actually gonna be a subtraction because I'm just gonna use the ones from last week. Oh no, I changed them up. Oh, never mind. I changed them up. Let's start with the same three operations. Those operations are going to be multiplication by two. We're going to start with the operations of multiplication by two. Which we're going to denote multiply by two. Uh, let's see, raised to the third power. Which we're going to type, uh, abbreviate as to the third and subtract five. Which are going to abbreviate subtract five. So these are things that we're going to do to X. And we're just going to permute them. We're just going to put them in different orders and see what the expression needs to look like so that we can, um, what the expression needs to look like to make these three operations go in the specified order. So let's begin. We're going to look at variations of multiplying by two, subtracting five, and third power. So variations on subtracting five, multiplying by two, and raising to the third power. So for example, if I write the expression, let's say two X cubed minus five. Here's what an expression shows up, no parentheses anywhere. This is our, just like, these are the three things Let's write down the three things that happen to X. What would, if we're, sorry, all of a sudden, all of a sudden my brain was hit with four sentences I wanted to say, and they all tried to come out at once and it came out of a mess. And so verbally, I'm, that part of my brain is like, oh, here, use these sentences. And then my face was like, oh no, hang on now, one at a time. And then my brain was like, oh no, all of them. Okay, Ooh. Ouch, that's too much for, for a Monday. I don't know if that's a more coffee problem or a less coffee problem, but, but I know what solution I'm gonna apply. So let's read what happens in this expression. Think about what happens to X first, then what do we do, and then what do we do after that? What order are these operations going to be applied? So what happens to the X first? So if we were gonna plug X equals, let's say, four into this expression, what's the first thing we would do to the four? I like to have concrete examples. So what if X equals four? So I have two times four to the third minus five. What's the first thing that we would do to the X in this expression? might help if we just think about the first thing that would happen to the four in this expression. What we do first to simplify? We would cube X, so we'd say, first thing we'll do is raise to the third power. And then we'll confirm that over here. Yep, there's multiplication, there's the four has multiplication, and there's an exponent, and exponents go before multiplication. Exponents before multiplication, and both of those go, go before subtraction. So first thing, four to the third is 64. I can dig it. I've taken the four and raised it to the third power. After we take the four to the third power, what happens second? What is the second thing that we do? So in our mind, we're thinking just after we cube X, what do we do with the result? Or in the example, I have taken four to the third power. What do I, what's the next thing that I do to the result, the 64? What happens next? So our decision before was to exponent goes before multiplication and multiplication goes before addition and subtraction. So the next thing is we're gonna multiply by two. 
So two times 64 is 128. So the next thing, after we cube x, then we multiply by two. We still haven't subtracted five yet. And then, so the last thing that we do, the third operation in the order is gonna be minus five. 128 minus five is 120 something. So it helps to look at, to think, to help us think about the order of the operations. Sometimes it'll help to do a specific example. What does this expression look like with a four plugged into it? And that might help us figure out what goes first, second, and third. Any questions? Once we learn how uh, thinking ahead, once we see how the what the how the expression is constructed, we can use that to help us deconstruct the expression. So if I wanted to solve an equation involving two x to the third minus five, I could just unwrap it by doing inverse operations, but in reverse order. So the inverse of minus five is add five. One twenty three plus five is one twenty eight. The inverse of multiplying by two is dividing by two. 128 divided by two is 64. The inverse of a third power is a cube root, also a one third power, and that gets us back to the four that we started with. So also, if we wanted to read this expression in a way that no one could mistake it and without just spelling the expression, we could read this expression as the difference of two times the cube of a number and five. Because we, when we write 2x cubed minus 5, that's requiring the understanding that the cube only applies to the x. But if I say the difference between 2 times the cube of a number and 5, you can't write anything but this. And it requires it doesn't require that you understand the cube only applies to the x. I've stated that in the way I read the expression. Let's change the order up a little bit. Let's suppose that I write the two x now in parentheses oops, and then subtract five. So now I have written a different thing. Parentheses have showed up. And so now I'm gonna have to think carefully about the order that things happen. So now, If I'm going to plug a number into the x, uh, the first thing that happens is not the exponents, because exponents go before multiplication unless there are parentheses. Exponents before multiplication unless parentheses. We use parentheses to alter the order. If we think about with a number plugged in, because we don't like just thinking about what will happen, I'm looking at 2 times 4 to the third minus 5. So now we can see that the first thing that the x sees is multiplication by 2. We've changed up the order. 2 times 4 is 8. The parentheses has, decide, has told us that we need to change the order of the multiplying by 2 and the raising to the third power. The next is we're going to raise the result to the third power. The parentheses said to switch these up, whereas no parentheses said the natural order should, should work. So eight cubed, uh, we have to figure out what eight cubed is. So eight cubed is 512. We still haven't done the subtracting of five. But then the third operation, is to subtract five. So then we have five, 12 minus five is 507. So we get a different value even though we plugged in four because we have a different expression. The parentheses told us to switch the order of the exponent and the multiplication. 
exponents before multiplication unless parentheses. Any questions? So in this case, we've looked at an expression and we've written down what's going on in that expression. Here's the expression. Here's the set of instructions for what's going on in that expression. When we're learning math, we have to learn math backwards and forwards. So now let's start with the order and write an expression. Because we have to learn this backwards and forwards. In the first one, we were writing an order for the expression. So here we're going to write an order for the expression. Now we want to go the other way, write an expression for the order. So I'm going to write down, I'm going to use the same three operations. I'm just going to write them down in a different order. Let's suppose that first, I think we should subtract five. Then the second thing that happens is we raise the result to the third power. And then the third thing that happens is we multiply by two. For whatever reason, just needed to come up with an example. So this is the order that I chose. It could be that the process that we're looking at requires these three things to happen. And this is the order that they need to happen. So I'm gonna start with my variable X. And the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to subtract five. So I'm just gonna write X. First thing that happens is minus five. The next thing that happens that has to happen is I want to raise the result to the third power. So I need to take this whole expression and raise it to the third power. And since I want the subtraction to go before this exponent, I'm going to need some parentheses to tell me to do the, the subtraction before the exponents. Finally, I need to multiply the result by two. I don't need another set of parentheses because the natural order is that multiplication goes after the addition, sorry, after the exponent. So if I just put a two out in front, that says two times the third power of the difference of X and five. So the idea is that given an order we have to figure out where to put the parentheses because it means very different things. If we want to check to see that this happens, if I start off with a four and subtract five, I get negative one. Negative one to the third power is still negative one. Negative one times two is negative two. If I have two times four minus five to the third power, let's see if it works for four. I have two times four minus five, which is negative one. Negative one to the exponents before multiplication. Negative one to the third power is negative one. Two times negative one is negative two. So seems to check out. Looks like the correct expression. Any questions? Let's do one more where you take an order and write an expression for it. Let's say we want to um, let's start off with uh, multiplying by two. Let's say the first thing that we want to do is multiply by two. 
And let's say after we multiply by two, then we want to subtract five. I've done multiplying by two then at to the third power. That was a previous one. So I just want to start with multiplying by two, but now I want to subtract five after that. And then third, I want to take the result and raise it to the third power. Let's write an expression that will do these operations in this order. So I'm going to start by just writing an x. The first thing I want to happen to the x is I want to multiply the x by 2. The next thing I want to happen is subtract 5. The natural order is that the multiplication goes before this subtraction. So I don't need any parentheses because I want to do the multiplication before the subtraction. But now since the last thing I want to do is raise to the third power, I'm going to need parentheses because that usually goes first. Exponents go before those other two. So I need parentheses around my 2x minus 5 to make sure that the exponent goes last. And so here is the expression that corresponds to this order, times 2 minus 5 to the third power. If we try this with a 4, it's going to be 2 times 4 minus 5 all to the third power. The order of operations says multiplication before addition and subtraction. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 5 to the third. 8 minus 5, the parentheses say to do the subtraction before the exponents. 8 minus 5 is 3. And then finally, 3 to the third power is 27. And that's what the instructions told us to do. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3, to the third is 27. Any questions? We need to be able to read these expressions so that we can see what's going on in the expression. I'm fairly confident that if I just gave you expressions and had you plug in values, you would know what to do. But we need to go beyond that. <clears throat> we need to be able to take this expression in an equation and say, what's the inverse of this? How do we undo all these things? And if we've got our plan written out, we can undo the plan really easily. Inverse of cube is a cube root. Inverse of minus 5 is add 5. Inverse of multiply by 2 is divide by 2. So the inverse, the way to solve the equation, is to cube root both sides, then add 5 to both sides, then divide by 2, and that'll get us back to the start. The cube root of 27 is 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Follow the inverse operations in reverse order. Also, if we want to speak this expression without just spelling it, is it the cube of the difference between 2 times a number and 5? Once you say it that way, no one can misinterpret what you've said. The cube of the difference between 2 times a number and 5 versus 2 times the cube of the difference between a number and 5 versus the difference between the cube of 2 times a number and 5 versus the difference between 2 times the cube of a number and 5. Any questions? All right. That's it for today. We're going to practice this operations business tomorrow. Uh, so before tomorrow, your assignment for tomorrow is to pick a date that has meaning for you, or to just randomly select a date if you don't want to assign meaning to it. And what I mean is I want you to pick a month and a day. And then tomorrow, we'll do our magic trick which is not magic because it's math. Math takes all the magic out of things. So that'll be for tomorrow in the 820 section. 
So uh, pick a month and a day. So you could pick July 12. That's what I would pick. Or I could pick um, May 24th. So, all right. That's it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow and thanks for playing.